coaches, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our next presenter in Rick Macy. Rick is a superstar within the tennis coaching world. He's a United States Professional Tennis Association Master Professional Coach and a seven-time USPTA National Coach of the Year. Nick has trained five world number one ranked players, including Andy Roddick, Jennifer Capriati, Maria Sharapova, and of course, the Williams sisters. In 2010, he was inducted into the USPTA Florida Hall of Fame. He serves as a consultant on the USTA Play Development Program in Florida, and in 2017, he was the youngest ever to be inducted into the USPTA Hall of Fame. Today, we're lucky enough to spend some time with Rick as he talks about what he sees in the serves are the key biomechanical benchmarks for a world-class serve. Over to you, Rick. Hey guys, Rick Macy here. I'm gonna get into the serve. Okay, I'm gonna to try to go start to finish. I'm gonna to try to go over a lot of key elements on the serve. This can be a little bit tricky. I feel the serve, it's the number one misunderstood thing in tennis. There's a lot of moving parts, and I know depending on the level, depending on the level, you know, of progressions you gotta go through, but I would like to give a holistic, uh, big picture look and go over some of the big ticket items that I feel are kind of misunderstood. And I know there's all different kinds of level of coaches that are watching this. Some of the things I'm gonna say are kind of vanilla, but let me go through. Uh, I'm actually in my office, I just jumped off the court. Sorry I couldn't do this on the tennis court. Um, but I wanted to get some stuff out for you just so you can kick it around and you can add some of this stuff to your toolbox. Some of it could be definitely a game changer. One of the biggest problems that happens on the serve, you grab the racket, okay? Now, when you grab the racket, your arm is twice as long, okay? This is the number one culprit around the world, the number one culprit around the world that messes up more serves. Most of the serves, mainly on the WTA, okay, are incorrectly, where the leg drive doesn't initiate the racket movement at the proper time. I'll get into that in a minute, okay? And because of young kids, mainly on the female side, they don't throw correctly at a young age, okay? Then when you put a racket in their hand and their arm is twice as long, there's a higher probability because of the strength factor and maybe the inadequate throwing motion, all right? When the racket goes back, it goes in too soon. I'm gonna get into that in a minute. But that is the number one problem because your arm is twice as long. But then you could take the same player and just put the ball in their hand and maybe have them throw and the, the hand is gonna stay on the hitting side and because they don't have a racket to generate momentum, okay, there's no real uh, thought in their head to say, oh, I gotta take it back farther. So when they just have a ball in their hand, the leg will initiate the throwing action. The power comes from the ground up, through the leg, through the hip, through the shoulder, and out the arm. So when people throw it, if they're throwing it correctly, the leg drive usually initiates the racket speed. If you're not, no one would throw like this. They would throw like that. But what I just did, my leg came up, my hip turned, my shoulder turned, it came out of my arm and I threw it. But now when you put this racket in your hand and you do the wind up, the racket has a tendency to get in anywhere from 10%, which we call leaking, to 100%, which you see a lot of people on the other side of their head, mainly on the female side and a lot of juniors growing up, they do this incorrectly. So at the end of the day, that's a very tricky thing Everything in life is in the eye of the beholder. You gotta really look for this. You almost have to look at it at 400 frames a second. I feel, tell people all the time, you know, what you may see is different than Rick may see, but my great partner, Dr. Brian Gordon, uh, who has his PhD in biomechanics, he did his thesis on this stuff. We kind of know this stuff inside out, so I can look at it and immediately tell, and I've helped so many players, especially on 
the WTA tour rewire their serve and immediately the percentage goes up dramatically. They can hit better angles and at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. But let me start from vanilla and go all the way down the yellow brick road and explain this. How you stand, what I recommend, okay, as long as you're somewhat sideways, experiment. There's not a wrong way or a right way, there's a better way. So you should experiment with how you stand, okay? I like to tell people kind of your left foot, if you're a righty, your left foot at the net post, right foot parallel, okay? And you always wanna be sideways. Obviously you don't be facing the net. That's kind of vanilla. The grip, slide it down, continental, you go Eastern backhand, always check the grip. Because if you don't have the right grip, all right? Ground strokes, a little different, because you got some variations on the menu. You can change, you know, you can have Western, semi-Western, you know, uh, a hybrid, you know, there's a bunch of different ways on the ground stroke. But on the Sur, there is a better way. You either have a continental, okay, or an Eastern backhand. So really check the grip, because remember, the grip orientates the racket face. So if the grip orientates the racket face, that could be a game changer. So the number one thing I look for, especially with younger kids or whatever, when they take the racket back, that the entry, okay? Forget what I said earlier about the whole timing. I'll get into that again. The edge of the racket, when you come in, the edge should come in. When the racket goes that way, which a lot of you guys see all the time, waiter, frying pan, pizza, whatever you wanna call it, which we call external rotation, okay? Then, when, if it goes in wrong, if the racket goes in wrong, what happens is, even if you did the timing better, it doesn't go down as far, it won't come out as far, it's gonna start to what we call turn the other way or pronate too soon, okay? And you'll never optimize or you'll never maximize the racket speed coming all the way through the body to snap, crackle, pop. It's never gonna happen. So the entry, how you, how you enter is a game changer. So if you gotta start people there, I get it. If you gotta start people there, I get it. But this thing has to come in the right way. That's probably the number one culprit that I see with younger kids, because they wanna kill it, and so the racket kinda goes this way, all right? So do it in progressions. It's the best way to put Humpty Dumpty together. You know, I always do things in progression, step by step by step by step. I could go on and on and on. You know, Roddy had a lot of external rotation. VW had a lot. Serena actually had a great natural throwing motion. Had to do a lot of work with Capriati's serve because uh, she was very mechanical. So it's not one size fits all. But this is more about the mechanical part I'm talking about today. Now, how you take the racket back? Not a wrong way or a right way, a better way. Some people, maybe you wanna just have more of an abbreviated take back. You know, Roddick went up right away and then he loaded the system. Maybe you had to have someone spread a little bit more. That's really up to you guys. But what I'd recommend is this. When you take the racket back, okay, the arms kinda of go down together, they go back together, but here's the key. And I see this a lot, especially with young kids, more on the female side, you want to get in the power position, shoulder, shoulder, elbow, and you want to feel this cock back, okay, cock back, but on the hitting side. Way too many times, the kids end up here, okay, they're going to open up so quickly, you're probably even saying they're opening up, that's a symptom. The reason why they're opening up this way is because this isn't far enough. There has to be a coil and a recoil. So. You wanna get in that position. That's why looking at video of the best of the best, of all the rest, show the kids video, a picture, so they can imitate a picture instead of you explaining things for six months, okay? So you always wanna be shoulder, shoulder, elbow. This will never change. Now the angle might change. You might go deeper, but this angle never changes. Be careful of this one. The kids go back, the elbow goes up too high and then comes back down. A very common one is they go back and then the elbow drops down. Just because the ball goes in doesn't mean it's a good serve, okay? You never want to really lose this angle. So, shoulder, shoulder, elbow. Look for that position. 
when you load up, and this is what a lot of people don't understand, especially with all this insanity on the internet and you know everybody does their best, but at the end of the day, most of the things I try to talk about are backed up by science. You know, I've done so much collaboration uh, with Dr. Gordon on this stuff long ago, cutting edge. So everything I say, uh, we can kind of back it up. You know, the facts don't lie. When you go back, you want like between 60 and 70% of the weight on the back leg. Now there'll be weight on both legs, but you want more weight on the back leg. There's people out there that will say, put the weight on the front leg. Well, there is weight on the front leg and the hip. You don't put the hip out. If you got the weight on the back leg, the hip will kind of come out on its own and you'll create this like reverse Y or whatever you want to call it. So at the end of the day, you want to get in the power position, the cocking phase, the loading phase in this position. Okay? Arms down together, up together. Don't have to. Listen, if you do something a million times, it's going to get better. But at the end of the day, it's just more advanced garbage. It's not the best way. The more you got going on, in my opinion, the more that can go wrong. So you want to get in the power position. This is the edge of the racket. You should always be talking about the edge. Edge in, edge down, edge out. Now this is what we call internal rotation where the racket comes back on the edge. You're reaching up. And what I like to tell the kids, especially almost like you're high-fiing the giant, okay? You want to edge in, then you're going to come. You're going to high-fi the giant. It's going to turn out naturally. And the thumb. The thumb is this way, then the thumb goes that way. There's so many complexities to the serve, especially when we talk about the toss, okay? You're going to want to toss the ball if you're righty a little bit to the right experiment. It's been my experience, believe it or not, I know the kids, people toss the ball too far back a lot of time, but a lot of times I see people toss it too far in front because coaches are too obsessed. Go into the court, go into the court. This is linear, that is vertical. You want to go up before you go out, okay? It's up and out, but you want to go up and out. I can show you a great video of Roddy. He's like this before he goes like that. It's all about the legs. Okay, now, if you have a student who's tight, sure, you gotta loosen them up. I get all that stuff. But the legs run the show. Now, if you're working with an adult and they can't really jump that well, then you gotta maximize the racket speed, I get that. But I'm talking big picture, world-class serve, world-class technique, okay? Now, a lot of times, uh, when we talk about the legs, and that's kind of where I wanna go with this, because I spend so much time and I almost have to reverse engineer the serve. And I've had 10 to 15 miles an hour on people serve in like 30 minutes and they freak out. The angle of descent, that means the angle of the ball going over changes. That means the percentage is higher and they can hit better spots on the court. Like the great Roger Federer, third most aces on the ATP tour, the guy 6'2", the way he set the racket and the way that he used the back leg and came up, amazing, okay, amazing. Because anybody can hit it hard, but can you hit it hard and get it in? So, class serve, world-class technique, okay? Now, a lot of times uh, when we talk about the legs, and that's kind of where I want to go with this, because I spend so much time and I almost have to reverse engineer the serve. And I've had 10 to 15 miles an hour on people serve in like 30 minutes and they freak out. The angle of descent, that means the angle of the ball going over changes. That means the percentage is higher and they can hit better spots on the court. Like the great Roger Federer, third most aces on the ATP tour, the guy 6'2", the way he set the racket and the way that he used the back leg and came up, amazing. Okay, amazing. Because anybody can hit it hard, but can you hit it hard and get it in? So once I get in the power position and the racket is on this side, and I think I got something on YouTube about this. This is a great exercise where you just drive your legs up, okay, turn your hip, turn your shoulder, bang, bang, bang. See, if you look from a side view, you would see the racket, it's kind of down the middle of my skull. And I bet a lot of you have students, I bet the racket's way over here. And that's usually because they want to create more 
of uh, energy and create more of that going on, but it should be on the hitting side. Now what's interesting, people do this sometimes better on the overhead because of this. They put, the, they put everything in this position and they, they kind of luck into this where the legs drive the racket. And if you look at some of your students, their overheads are a little more compact, more organized, and more on the right side of the body. This is the right side. Okay, more on the hitting side. And as a result, it's more dynamic and explosive because they're not tossing the ball and there's all this stuff that's going on. So at the end of the day, very important that if, you, if I could say one powerful thing, it's the number one mistake around the world, it's the number one mistake on the tour, especially more on, on the WTA side, where the racket is in too soon before the legs drive, where you see the best servers in the world. The racket's on this side where the leg drive initiates. That means the leg drive makes the racket go in. This is very hard to see with the human eye. This is kind of advanced. I work on this more than anything. I put people on probation. What I mean by that, not real probation. I put the racket here and I go do this step by step by step. A lot of times, and I know we're not supposed to say the word jump, because if you bend and go up, I tell people to jump too soon. How many times have you had a student jump too soon? Very seldom. Almost every one, their legs go too late. But we can't see that because we're so programmed, okay? And a lot of this stuff, you know, people got away with it. People got away with it the last 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Now that we can see all this stuff and we understand it better, okay? This is very, very important that you understand exactly um, what I'm talking about. So have your student jump and then hit the ball. I know that sounds crazy, but the serve, believe it or not, is more like a volleyball spike, okay, or a karate move than it is la 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 la, then all this. This is window dressing. How you get to the moment of truth, that's an idiosyncrasy, that's a personal interpretation, how each person wants to do it how they want to start the racket. I don't want to get into that. We could be here for hours, okay? But the moment of truth, when you get to here, how is the lower body synchronized with the upper body? And is it at the right time? Very, very important. Because if you look at it, a lot of the serves on the men's side, they look different, generally speaking, than on the women's side. The men's serve look like their stroke is shorter and it's more explosive. It's because it is, because it's biomechanically correct, because the legs drive at the right time and it's on the hitting side. It's almost like the ATP forehand opposed to a WTA forehand. That's a whole nother video also. So listen, I just wanted to share a lot of this. I know I'm kind of jumping around, um, but I wanted to share some of this with you. If any of you have a question, you can actually email me, info at rickmacy.com. I try my best to get back to you. But this is so important that you do some of this stuff. And like I said earlier, I have people jump and then hit the ball. So they feel the other side of the rainbow. I have the number two kid in the world. I had to make him jump backwards. Yeah, backwards. Because he was so far like the leaning tower of Pisa, his weight was forward too soon because off the ground, he just liked to grind. He was like Buddha, you know, his serve wasn't even part of his game. I had to get him to jump backwards because he was so far linear, and when I got him to go backwards, I finally got him to go vertical, and in 15 minutes, his serve got 12 miles faster. It changed his whole game. And in one year, it's like 15 miles faster, and it goes in. So at the end of the day, you kind of got to almost do the exact opposite to get the result. This is the art of coaching, how to say it, why to say it, when to say it, who to say it to. You can't read a book and just get better. Everybody's different. Everybody comes with different issues and how to correct those issues for that person, that day, that hour, that minute, that second. That's the art of coaching. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. I hope this was helpful. And if any of you are ever in Florida, look me up. I'll be on court number one, Boca Raton, Florida. And remember, keep working hard.